Right, this is another Knowledge Hub from USG. I'm Mike Campbell. Uh, please, please remember that if you're a smart engineer, even a fully qualified smart engineer, you should still not be taking boilers apart. You need a total separate qualification for that, at least be CCM1 and SENWAT1 qualified. Uh, if you are an apprentice or a trainee, you must be doing this work fully supervised at all times. Right, I'm just going to give you a brief rundown on a modern condensing combi boiler. Uh, I know in the smart world you would never be taking these to bits, but it's, it's good to know roughly how it operates, uh, give you a basic understanding and how you would put it into operation should you need to do any testing within the customer's house, i.e. work and pressure and standing pressure. So, we have your pipe work going in underneath. So we've got a flow and return on your heating circuit. We've got a hot and cold, uh, which is where your mains comes out the hot water tap. You'll have your gas supply, mains gas supply coming in from the meter, and you'll have a condensing pipe. As this is a modern high efficiency combi boiler, you will find it has a condensing pipe, which is a byproduct of fluing or byproduct of combustion. So inside we've got a pump, a gas valve, a diverter valve a low water pressure switch and in the top part here we've got the main burner and a fan. So when you put a demand on the boiler, i.e. you put on the uh, hot water tap, so for instance we turn our hot water tap on, inside of here we have a flow switch. So what that does is just recognise demand on that boiler. Once it recognises demand, everything comes back to the circuit board which is its brain if you like. This will now ask the pump to run. When the pump is running, it will recognise that and ask the diverter to move. The diverter will move into hot water position, allowing anything that the heat that boiler creates to pass through the secondary heat exchanger at the back. This will allow hot water to come through your taps rather than be dispersed around through the heating circuit. So with the demand on there, which is controlled by the sensors, the boiler will go to spark and then fire up. Dependent on the demand on the boiler, so i.e. we've got some hot water running there now and we want a lot of it, the sensors recognise that and the fan runs at maximum rate, drawing through the gas from the, uh, gas from the gas valve. This will be lit inside via the spark generator and rectified via the rectification probe coming back to the, boi uh, to the PCB to let you know that the, that the boiler's fired. Now, as that runs, the heat's created inside of there, the pump will circulate that heat around the boiler and through that secondary heat exchanger. On the opposite side of that, the water coming in, your mains cold, will then be heated inside the boiler and go out hot through the tap. As the demand decreases, the fan speed will slow, drawing less, water, drawing less gas through the gas valve allowing that to modulate down and run it out. Not, not a cooler temperature, but a, a cooler temperature for the boiler, not necessarily through the tap. After demand, I will turn off the tap and everything would stop running. The, pu the pump will continue to run to clear the heat from the boiler and then it would go back to its standby mode. Now, if I put the central heating on by turning up the thermostat or some of you guys have modern apps that turn on their central heating now, they might turn that on, the boiler will again recognise that there's a demand on there, fire up, this time the diverter will open so it will allow the heat that the boiler creates to pass down through the flow pipe, running around through the radiator circuit and come back to the, hot, to the boiler to be reheated again. The hotter your system is, the less the boiler needs to work. So again, the demand, the initial demand is going to be high on the boiler. As the water going out the boiler is hot, the water coming back from the radiators is much cooler temperature. As that return temperature starts to increase, what's going to happen is the sensors are going to pick that up and again, lower the speed of the fan, which is going to draw less gas through, which is going to allow that burner to modulate. By modulating, uh, instead of turning on and off, will make the boiler much more efficient as it operates.
If you're enjoying this video, please like and subscribe to the channel.